Welcome back to another beginner series video. This one is about spindle work, um, basic cuts and some practices you can do to improve it. We are going to be using three tools. So spindle gouge, this is continental style spindle gouge. Um, I use this for uh, roughing down bigger uh, spindles. Although since I have this one inch skew, 25 mil, uh, I found I'm using this for pretty much everything so <laughs> but for you I'm going to show you this one for roughing down I don't have a deep uh, deep flute uh, spindle roughing gouge so this is just spindle gouge regular one old style and a conventional spindle gouge this is half inch so mount the piece of blank uh, so this is cherry around 60 mil something like that um, now you can mark the cross hairs, so diagonal measure and the center would be the cross hair, or you can use those jigs, whatever suits you. What I like to do is actually is I uh, sight through this side like so, and I place the prong here, uh, not prong, the, the spike on the middle. Then I rotate it 90 degrees and I can adjust if I'm not close, so a little bit movement. Turn it back to 90 and adjust if needed. And that's it, so that can be pushed in. Same on this side, so I side through this side first. Bring the tailstock revolving center closer a bit. Rotate it 90, so I need to adjust it. This way you practice more by eye stuff, so it's not necessary and uh, if you have like a table leg you would like to get across here since it's much more um, effective. Uh, another thing that I want to point out, which is quite important, and that is the sound. Now, listen to this. Now if I tighten the stock, the spindle, that's fully tightened now. If I loosen it, can you maybe hear the change in pitch? And now even more. So that's now wobbly, so that's loose, loosely on there. So I tighten just a little bit. <coughs> You'll see at the end. Uh, why the pressure on the of the tail stock is important so you don't want to uh, put extreme amount of pressure because if it's too thin of a spindle you can bend it so it's to always to make it round so I use this the rest is uh, pretty much so the tool cuts on the center at, at this stage so you can drop the handle and just go from First of all, go from, this is quite important, I see a lot of people start at the middle and then go here. It's much easier if you scoop piece here and then follow that. That way, uh, the one you cut and the tool goes into the, uh, the piece that you already cut, so it looks like this. Bring the speed, on the spindle work like this, you can bring the speed uh, a little bit more if everything is nice and secure so I'm putting my hand here so I reduce the shaving supply around so scooping action I'll do it a little bit slower It also helps out uh, if you actually tighten the the tail stock. So <laughs> here into the void. Okay, and if I go this direction or from the middle out, you're hitting a lot of end grain here, which is not always the most pleasant thing. You can start here. 
but you go to the left so every cut next uh, will like face the void here that you already cut Here this is now smooth and here is not so you can see from the edge here how it wants to peel side grain see pretty much the same stuff you can get with the skew so Again, helps if you tighten everything up. So. Okay. Reasonable finish. Far from perfect, but I'm going to finish rounding this over and then I'll show you a few cuts. Richard Raffin has really nice method of, method of showing this so the wood will always come down onto the tool the way you present the tool if I go straight like this much like most uh, carbide scrapers are acting so this is peeling much like carbide scrapers do so you're presenting the tool edge 90 degrees to the uh, coming down edge uh, surface of the wood so this is pretty rough now cherry is quite forgiving and but this is still absolutely rough so when the wood is coming down onto your tool if you present it around 45 degree edge you will get nice clean cut so I'll clean this up I can see here it's around 45 degree here and you'll see the difference here versus here where it's the edge is at 90 degree so this is now without any torn grain so this area here from here to here this and you can see the difference here where it's all fuzzy torn out so quite a big difference uh, now I'll show you how the skew works now for the skew I like to bring the the rest up so I'm cutting with the skew on the upper portion of the rotation of the piece so with the skew the most important thing is to use the edge bottom portion here if you turn it around and use it like so then you're using this part so the part which is closer to the wood, so it will be this one, you, and you, if you're using it like so, so only this part goes into the contact with the wood, because it has support here. This part doesn't have, and that's why you have a catches, which I'll try to show you. So, again, wood is coming down, I place the bevel, and I'm bringing my uh, handle up, until I see the shavings fly over the edge, the bottom part edge, even the one third uh, bottom one you can use, and it's your safe zone, let's say. So here I'm getting dust over the edge, and now you can move your tool forward.
Okay, and now this is the better surface you can have with a tool. The skew makes on a spindle work especially best surface. So this surface doesn't need any sanding. Uh, you can use it like so. It's just perfect. Other cuts with uh, skew, which I'll show you uh, how to reduce diameter quite quickly, which is the peeling cut. I'll leave that to the last. This is the fattest part of the spindle. Um, here you can see how the dust is coming over the bottom portion here. And the catch ca uh, happens if you hit the edge, the top edge, which is not supported by the tool rest, you then get a catch. So this is the catch. Okay, try to slow it down. And this is the big one. Okay. But uh, spindle is still intact, uh, I mean between the, the centers. Uh, the only thing that's uh, like uh, messed up is this part. So a little bit of gouge, we clean that up, but uh, nothing happened. Uh, so I'm not injured, um, the spindle didn't fly off, so catch with the skew, it's, it's not that exciting, let's say, uh, versus the catch with the bow gouges and uh, uh, spindle gouges and stuff like that, uh, scrapers even. So uh, skew, although it messes up the wood, it's pretty safe. So. We just threw up the blank. So you never start from the edge in. You do to the edge out. And then, so get the cut and then A little bit more. A little bit more. Pretty much gone. Now, uh, by the way, this practice is uh, from Richard Raffan uh, DVD, uh, Turning Wood, I believe, and uh, uh, from the book as well, I think. So, you just place uh, 20 mil apart, few dots. is make a series of coals so we'll start with this one so if i present the tool open watch what happens it skates over every time and it's sort of a catch that's what happens if you present the ball gouge as well so it makes a nice spiral so we'll clean that up again I'm presenting the 45 degree edge to the wood and get nice clean cut but I did lose a mark here so so the proper way to start is to close the gouge so this is now at three o'clock facing, uh, sorry, the nine o'clock facing uh, flute. Now you can start. Okay. 
and I will start a little bit in more open the gouge once you're in the wood to the halfway point there is no point in going like so because first of all this right side will be cut cleanly and this one wouldn't be cut as you see because you're going against the grain on this left part and you'll see if you can see this part here is a little torn out and this the right part here is nicely cut clean so again close the foot now it's at three o'clock once the nose of the gouge enters you can open it up and you watch what happens here at the top do not watch down what the tool does okay we'll skip one make a few more lines again skip one field start from the middle Okay, so next part of the the exercise is from the middle of the flat oops the flat spot make a curve down to this so you make a wave so you, you find the bell and you just ride it down again watch what happens at the horizon same here find it like so I just want to get an edge a dust just over the so this is the middle I'm looking for a dust just the right of that middle line By the way, the the cut is nice and clean. It has a little bit of ridges, but these ridges will sand out immediately. That's not important. So, as you can see, these are all cut nice and clean. This at the end will be half bead. Now you see the the exercise. So this uh, for the spindle gouge. You can see the, these are waves. Okay, so next part of the exercise is to make beads so I've done one here so 
you just continue this curve a little bit down more. Don't go too deep. Okay. Okay, so here you can see a bunch of beads, big beads. For the skew I like to bring the rest a little bit more up. Now this is the most fun and enjoyable cut with the skew. So you go above the rotation, you hold the handle nice and up to the ferrule. I hold my left hand here and you go above the rotation and you start to lift the handle and you'll get nice peel cut like so okay i want to get down a little bit more Now this cut won't leave a pretty surface, you can see it removes wood, especially in the spindle work, extremely well, so it's a little bit rough right here as well. So next uh, stuff is to, so I mark an, uh, another 20 mil distance, so use the long point down to pierce it, and the way you pierce it, you raise the handle just, so locate it where you want to, and just raise the handle, and again here, and again, and using the long point down, we can make V grooves on one side, on other side. Okay, so I want to show you a catch. So here I'm going fine, and if I rotate it too much to the left. It will cut the upper edge here, around here, which is not supported by the tool rest, so it will look something like this. It's not as dramatic uh, because it's smaller diameter, but nevertheless you'll see what happens. Okay, so it tears pretty pretty well here big chunk missing so I just remove this since 
this is not it's ruined so it's not important now so we'll do another V groove here so tilt slightly skew to the right and lift the handle to the left and I'm perpendicular to the hood with the skew and raise the handle and then you want to see a nice gap here I'll try to show you here I'm cutting at the bottom but here at the top this edge here there is need to be some gap if you cut it well this is called side peeling <laughs> but it doesn't want to catch now but doesn't matter you get the point there we go nice catch another regroup here useful tool actually excellent tool especially I like this uh, one inch skew which I starting to, to be my favorite tool and on some of these weak grooves I'm not too keen to look them as pretty with uh, these uh, shapes is to make them into beads with the skew so you can do it two ways you can uh, do it with uh, all of the this edge which is quite a difficult technique so you ride the bevel above th this corner here you can see maybe where it's rubbed and once you have the catch, uh, when, sorry, uh, when you have the uh, edge engaging, then you rotate your handle and you lift it up, and you get nice half bead. Same stuff here, but it's also easy to get a catch. I'll show you here. And if I now let it go a little bit. Oh and you just ruin your perfect bead same you can do it here that didn't meant to do so the other uh, which is much more safer option is to use this little point so I mean this bead is already ruined so we'll remove it this one as well and you we'll start with this one so I use the lower point you ride ride the bevel so it's a little bit rough surface here so I clean it right uh, that bevel and uh, find that biting point for this corner and just roll the tool and lifting up the handle at the same time and you get extremely nice cut bead, half bead in this case. That doesn't need sanding at all. Same stuff here.
once you get the hang of it you can make them similar like this so. okay another I have another piece here uh, so another great uh, exercise uh, with the spindle is just shoot this up first and I'll show you another peeling cut Uh, is to make um, a cove with a spindle gouge so what I like to do is start on its side so the nose enters I rotate the rotate the handle slightly and push it down and over so it's a compound movement sort of weird looking but Sorry, not the call. What's it called? Uh, Roman OG. Maybe you can see it here. I'll do the same on this side. So from here. Let the skew. As I zoom in, you can now see the shadow line down here of the Roman OG curve. So it's a cove and a bead on the same side, side two sides uh, with the spindle gouge. Okay, so I want to show you a few more catches with this skew. So most common is to place the uh, skew on the wood before on the tool rest. And it looks uh, like this, it's a bang. Show you again, and the wood here is quite gnarly. You can see where it grabs a few times in a, in a split second. Another great catch would be. So you can see here I'm using, just grab a pencil, I'm using bottom portion where the dust is coming from, so this part, and if I roll it to the upper edge you'll see a catch. So That didn't go spectacularly. Let's try again, again. Okay, now you can see it a little bit clearer, hopefully. Again, nothing happened to me. The tool didn't jump out of my hand and did any serious damage apart from the wood. So, the wood you can see here. It's quite badly ruined. So that's quite common, but again, nothing happened to me. Uh, there is another type of catch quite common in my case at least I will I'll show you here how I like to roll a bead so I using all of the edge maybe it's better shown with a bigger gouge uh, skew and this is nicely cut bead and this is where I get most catches and that's like so.
if you lose the bevel contact and it's quite common to do you get nice spiral with the spindle gouge you can roll tiny beads as well This chapter you saw how to rough out the spindle, how to use a spindle gouge and how to use a skew and a few of the catches and uh, it's always nice to, uh, to, to, to see those. And um, so in the next uh, chapter we'll deal more about cross grain work, uh, do some uh, type of cuts and uh, in the chapter after that we'll start to make some projects.